Good morning. Is it cool in here or is it just me? <laughs> I got a haircut this week and I got more off than I was expecting. Went, uh, went to a different barber. Well, same shop, just use a different barber. And oh, well, we have this today here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. More aerodynamic. Um, so we're continuing our study today in Nehemiah, chapters 3 and 4. After, so last week, was that hard to hear? The weightiness of the, of the, of the sermon, the weightiness of the article, was that a difficult hear to, or thing to listen to? It was a difficult thing for me to preach on. It was a difficult thing for me to speak on. Um, but like I said last week, we, we have to assess the condition that we're in and make the right call as far as action is concerned. What is it that we need to do to progress from this point? Um, and I don't think that today's sermon will be any easier, honestly. Um, uh, like, you know, I, I, I've said it all along, I'm not, I'm not a cheerleader. I'm going to tell you what's in the Word of God. Um, I'm not here to let you know, oh, everything is all right. Have a positive attitude and you'll be okay. You don't want to do that with any other illness and so last week there was an opportunity at the end of the sermon um, I was reading from 1 John chapter 1. If we take Nehemiah's example and what he does before taking on the work that he did, there was lots of prayer, there was fasting, and then there was confession. Confession of his people's sin the people of Israel, confession of his own family, and then his own personal sin. And at the end of the sermon, that's what, that's what I was calling to. And if you haven't taken that opportunity, please do so. And you might say, well, I'm good to go. I don't have anything to worry about. First John says, if you say you have no sin... Right? There are things, there are scars, there are hurts that leave a mark. And there's heaviness, there is rooted stuff within us that we have to, if we're going to grow, we have to. And I'm not saying growth in numbers, I'm saying as individuals, if we're going to grow, we have to allow the Lord to grow us up. And sometimes that takes some, some work. It does not feel good. Just as a point of review, let's go to 1 John. I'm going off the plan, but here we go. Walking in the light, starting in verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie. 
and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus is his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, this isn't just to people in general. This letter is to a church. The assumption is that there was sin within that church. We know the world is lost. We know there's sin out there. But we have to allow the Lord to do deep surgery within us also. We've been freed. Yes. We're no longer slaves. Right. But the process continues on. Sanctification continues on for the rest of our life. And so we have to submit to that. So I invite you to do that. Collectively, yes, but individually, Lord, seek my heart. Where I am wrong, Correct. Where I am stubborn, where I am prideful, pride, we talked about this morning, is a huge enemy. Yes, Satan is at work. He is prowling around like a roaring lion, seeing, seeking whom he may devour. But our own pride hardens our heart and keeps the Holy Spirit at bay. There's lots of work to do. If we're going to impact this community, it starts with that. It starts with us being in right standing with our Creator. In chapter 3, um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, actually, I'm not going to read chapter 3 at all. <laughs> There's a ton of names in there. And it's not, listen, the word of God, every single mark, every single word is valuable. And I invite you to go and examine chapter 3 on your own. Um, because the Lord saw it fit for all of these names and all of these sections in the wall to be named. God in his sovereignty decided that that should be written down. But me and my ignorance, I'm going to kind of skip over it. We will be here for the whole hour just reading names. Like I said at the beginning of the series, a lot of people have used Nehemiah as, um, like, uh, if they're taking on a building project another wing to a building or adding on or, you know, doing stuff like that. And, and, and they go to Nehemiah and say, you know, and use that example as something to look at so that we can fund that thing, so that we can all, you know, gather together to, to raise the funds to finish up the project. We have enough building here that we're not, right, Gene? We don't need any more. We've got a huge facility. What we are working on is building the kingdom of God here and out there. It's hard work. And so we dive into Scripture so that we may be shaped by Scripture, so that we don't do it in our own understanding or our own ignorance, but the Lord is leading us to the work and through the work. But when we look at chapter 3, I'm just going to hit some points on chapter 3. What we see is it's all hands on deck. It's families being appointed a certain section in the wall that they are responsible for.
and what's, how it is um, assigned to the given person is that their household is within a short distance of the wall. Their house is dependent on that wall being built. It's families. We're protecting our families. We are stewards of the family that we have, biologically, yes, but brothers and sisters in Christ. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am my brother's keeper. And it was a necessary work. It was important for them to build up these defenses to strengthen the community, to protect them from the enemy, the attacks of those that surrounded them. And there was, it's nothing, there's nothing like for someone that, you know, leader of household, parents, there's nothing like that call, right, to protect your own that really motivates to get things going. My first attempt at going to school, we should erase that from the history of the world. It's not that I didn't know, because the next time around, with kids and a wife and two or three different jobs all at the same time, I, I got the A's that I never saw when I was a single. But I had to build that wall. Right? I had to build that wall for my kids, for my wife. Had to finish up. There's something to that. Everyone within a this group, there is diversity, but there's still unity. Everyone that is a part of the city is responsible for the wall. There wasn't anyone that just was hanging around, drinking a pop, and just like chilling over here in the middle of the city and not. No, everyone had a responsibility. I said pop. I think we say Coke around here, right? For all drinks, everything is a Coke. might call me a Yankee. I don't know. But everyone has a responsibility. Everyone had a starting point and a finishing point. The starting point is where the other people left off. And the finishing point is where the next group of people are going to take on. And there wasn't any customizing, you know? I, I, this section right here, I'm building it, so I'm just going to do it my way. I'm going to build a little porch, all right? And then a little pit right here so we can have some barbecue on the weekend. Well, it wouldn't be pork. It would be a cow or something. But no one was able to do that. It's, this is the way that we're building it. Don't make... You know, you can't customize it, take a turn here and add on there. No, build the wall. Just build the wall. Just preach the gospel. Preach and teach the gospel. Disciple. That's what we're called to. Not, not for conversions. Not for an amen. But a lifelong walking with someone and teaching and preaching the word of God and growing together. We're building a wall. If you don't have someone in your life that you are investing in and bringing the word of God to, you're not building a wall. 
If you don't have someone in your life pouring into you and saying, hey, I think you got this wrong. Where you freely expose yourself and, and are vulnerable and they can speak into your life and correct and encourage. You're not building a wall. The life of a Christian isn't neutral. There is action. Belief isn't just had knowledge. A historical figure that was crucified. That's documented. Anyone in the world can go and look that up and say, well, yes, there was a Jesus. Yes, from Nazareth. Yes, crucified. And he caused, you know, some a stir, you know, in, in, in Israel and Jerusalem with the religious people of the time. But they can also take it a different direction. He was a revolutionary. And we should do things like Jesus did. Go against the system. That's not the gospel. So it's not belief in just some historic figure. It's belief that it's transformational. It's belief that everything that is writ written in the word of God is something to abide by. Not look at it and yeah, but. Get proper context, get proper understanding of what is written down, why it was written down at the time it was written down, and for the people that it was written down. And now, how does it apply into my life? There are certain things that were written specifically for them, for their culture, for their time. We don't, we, we're talking this morning, we don't walk around with our head covered. It, it's not necessary here. But it was necessary then. We don't have a prayer show, right, to show our devotion. But it was necessary then. But there is a message here. There's a very important message here that we have to submit to. Nehemiah is an important book. When we're submitting to the word of God and, and what the Lord did through Nehemiah and through those faithful followers. I'm going to get a little bit of a, ahead of myself, but it took 52 days to finish the project. It's an enormous undertaking. And you'll see today as we get into our lesson, we haven't even started our lesson, is that there was a time when people were afraid. I don't think we can finish this thing. And the enemy is about to attack. Let's go ahead and get in it. Nehemiah chapter 4. Now when Samballot heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. He said, in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in, in a day? 
Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burn? <clears throat> Ones at that, Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him, and he said, yes. What they are building, if a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. And then here's a prayer. Hear our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Do not cover their guilt and let not their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Samballot and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was <clears throat> going forward, and the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. In Judah, it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And our enemies said, they will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. At that time, the Jews who lived near came from all directions and said to us ten times, you must return to us. So in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall, in open places, I stationed, I stationed the people by their clans with their swords, their spears, their bows, and I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the family, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your homes. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, we all returned to the wall, each to his work. From that day on, half of my servants worked on construction and half held the spears, shields, bows, and coats of mail. And the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were, were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand, held his weapon with the other. And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side while he built. The man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. And I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, the work is great and widely spread, and we are separated on the wall far from one another. In the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there, our God will fight for us. So we labored at the work, and half of them held the spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. I also said to the people at that time, let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem that they may be a guard for us by night and may labor by day. So neither I nor my brothers nor my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me, none of us took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon at his right hand. Let's pray and then we'll continue with our, with our lesson. Lord, guide us this morning. Give us understanding. Holy Spirit, bring your conviction upon us where we must abide where we are not understanding. 
Lord, give us understanding. Give us courage to fight the fight within ourselves, Lord, against the flesh. To resist the enemy. We surrender to your will and to your word this morning, Lord, teach us. We praise and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Nehemiah 4. Now when Sambalat heard that, they, that we were building the wall, he was angry. There's the opposition. He was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered. He mocked at the Jews. And he said in the presence of his brothers and the army of Samaria, what are these feeble Jews doing? What are they doing? Can you picture it? He's mocking them. And he's saying, what? What are these weaklings doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish up in a day? Will, will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burnt ones at that? They're going to use this same rubble to restore, to rebuild that wall? They're fools. What are they thinking? Tobiah, the Ammonite, was beside him. So some of you, this may go over your heads for you young kids. There used to be back in the day this, call, this show called Looney Tunes. And there was a variety of different, like there was a character, Bugs Bunny, and there was a duck, and there was like all of these different characters. Some of you might remember, I don't know. Um, so when I look at Tobiah, and what he's got to say, there was this one show, um, I'm digging back in my training, movies and, and TV. Um, a, a big dog, and I think his name was Spike, and there was a little dog, um, I can't remember the little dog's name. Someone said it. Butch? So there was a big dog, and there was a little dog, and they were kind of fighting with a cat. The, what's the cat's name? Sylvester. Sylvester, that's right. And so, there, bear with me, bear with me. We're getting to a point. There is a point. It may not be very important, but it's a point. So they were trying to get at Sylvester, and, and Sylvester went and hid somewhere. Right? And there was a black tail coming out of this dark area and and the big dog goes to get the cat and he is being cheered on by the little puppy the little yappy dog little rat dog and so he, the big dog goes to get the the cat and he can't get the cat and so he he's ready to go he goes into this dark spot and comes out looking like a ghost But the yappy dog is constantly, constantly with him, right? And so when I think, <laughs> sorry, we went off track there for a minute. But when I think of this, I kind of look at it as that little yappy dog. There's the, the big guy, is, is Sam Ballot. And, and Tobiah is his sidekick. And he's like cheering them on. And, like, and then he wants to make a joke in the middle of this because Sam Ballot is mocking them. What, what are these fools doing? And Tobiah is like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're so, oh my gosh, they're so dumb. If a fox gets up there, it's going to knock it down. Silence. He wasn't as funny as he thought he was. Isn't that right, Spike? Right? If they... Man, just be quiet. Tobiah, just hush. Hear, O 
our God, for we are despised. This is Nehemiah going into prayer, saying, Lord, look at what's going on. They're coming against us. You see the resistance, Lord. We are doing your work that you called us to and look at the resistance. Hear our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered. Do not cover their guilt and let not their sin be blotted out. For they have provoked you to anger in the presence of these builders. Right away he goes to prayer. Lord, look at the resistance. Look at their mockery. Be with us, Lord. Guide our hands, guide our work. There was a variety of people. Not all were masons. Not all could work with rock. It was different people coming together to do the work. And some of them were learning to do the work as they were doing it. Lord, guide us. Protect us against the enemy. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. They got it up to the halfway mark because they were dedicated to the work. It was important to them. They saw the necessity for continuing on. But here comes the resistance again. Oh, they're serious. They've got it up to the halfway mark. We've got to do something about this. But then Sambala and Tobiah and the Arabs, the Ammonites and the Astadites, heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward. And they got angry again. And they all got together again. And they all plotted together again to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. They prayed, but it wasn't just pray and then you know, God will take care of it. They prayed and took action. And they didn't take action alone. It wasn't just like, all right, Come on, Bob. Come on, Sam Ballot. Oh, no, not Sam Ballot. It's the other guy. Guys, let's gather around. How are we going to take care of this? And then within their own understanding, took care of the need. No, it included prayer. So it's not one or the other. It's both. We pray fervently for direction, and then we take action. So we set a guard as protection, day and night. But then in Judah, there's this whisper. There's this whisper. Verse 10. The strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rope. There is so much work to do. There are times that we don't go into the kids' uh, room, you know, for a few days, and, um, and they're able, you know, they have the capacity to destroy anything that they go into. But when it's time to send them back to clean up what they were able, fully capable of doing, oh, it's overwhelming. Man, there is so much trouble. I don't think, I don't think I can do it. I definitely can't do it on my own. I think I need a parent to come and help me. I'm sure none of you have ever experienced that. Just being vulnerable, you know, with my struggles. 
The strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much, too much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. And at the same time, in that moment of weakness, the enemy, they hear the whisper. They will not know. They don't even know what's going to hit them. They won't know that we're coming until we're right on them. At that time, the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us, you must return to us. So in the lowest parts of the space, behind the wall, in open places, I stationed the people. There was a gathering of people to those weak areas, to those that were losing heart. In open places, I stationed the people by their clans with their swords. With your sword. We're going to take on this work with sword in hand. This is the only offensive weapon that is named in Ephesians. Everything else is defensive. Put on the whole armor of God, and this is your sword. Get to know how to operate your sword so you don't cut a toe off. Get to know your sword. We're going to work. There is work to be done. To rebuild. To impact. To grow the kingdom of God. But in it's, it's not in our own understanding. It's not I've got a great idea. That needs to be filtered to, through the word of God. And we do the work with sword in hand. I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid. Remember the Lord who is great. Remember the Lord who is great. The work is not too much. The rubble is not too much. There's just enough. There is just enough so that everyone participates. Don't be afraid. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your sisters. Your sons, your daughters, your wives, your homes. Verse 15. When our enemies heard that it was known to us that God had frustrated their plan, God, through prayer, through action, frustrated their plan. They have a plan to sneak up and to destroy, to stop the work, but God knew and frustrated their plan. From that day on, my servants worked on construction, half held the spears, shields, bows, coats of mail, and the leaders stood behind the whole house of Judah who were building on the wall. Those who carried burdens were loaded in such a way that each labored on the work with one hand and held the weapon in the other. Each of the builders had a sword strapped to his side. And there was a man with a trumpet the man who sounded the trumpet was beside me, and I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, the work is great and widely spread. There is a lot to do all over the place. And we are separated on the wall, far from one another, in the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Where there are weak points, where there may be an attack, listen for the sound of help. Listen for the sound of the trumpet. And everyone rally there. Our God will fight for us. 
So we labored at the work, and half of them held the spears. From the break of dawn until the stars came out, I also said to the people at that time, let every man and his servant pass the night within Jerusalem, that they may be, that be a guard for us by night and may labor by day. So neither I nor my brothers nor my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me, none of us took off our clothes. Each kept his weapon at his right hand. Always, always with the weapon in the right hand. Get to know your sword. There is a lot of work. And it may be overwhelming. The temple, when we look at Ezra, when it was, there was, so there was three different trips, three different missionary journeys and the first one was to rebuild the temple. Nehemiah is the third one. But on the first one, when they rebuilt the temple, all hands on deck, everybody was at work. The people that remained in that territory remembered the old temple. And they grieved and they mourned over the new temple not reflecting the old they remembered the good old days of that old temple. And they kept them from glorifying God because of this new temple. There may be elements of the new wall that won't reflect the old. And we have to be okay with submitting that to the Lord. Because it wasn't about a little porch in their area or customizing it to their own preference, right? Their section of the wall, it was pretty straightforward. So as we rebuild, let's try. It's hard. Let's try to set aside and submit to the Lord, set aside our preferences. And say, not, not my will, Lord. Not my will, but your will. It's your kingdom. And let's prepare our hands for the work. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. It is convicting to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for, um, for speaking into my life and correcting me where I am off. Lord, I thank you and I treasure that. It is difficult. It is hard. Help me to continually submit to that, Lord. Where I'm off, that you are ministering to me. I pray that your word would shine through this morning, Lord. That we may take advantage and study what is here and let it speak into our lives. Correct us, Lord. Mature us in our walk, in our relationship with you, that we may see you rightly. You are great and you are awesome. You are wonderful, all-powerful. And we need you desperately. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.